One more. Hey, Silen, how are you? Hi, I'm fine, and you? Doing good, doing good. Getting tired, this is my last <laughs> one. <laughs> Third one in a row, so. Oh. Yeah, so. And Elmer, welcome back. Oh, I did it. Oh, well, thanks, Jimmy. I and was playing a, a song with my guitar. You were playing your guitar? Yeah. Nice. That's very nice. I'm playing a song called Sweet Dreams. Is that um by somebody famous? I don't think so. No. It's a, a classic song. Okay. He, he yeah. likes He likes samba. No. Oh. Gotcha. Gotcha. No, and I don't really like samba. That's no? uh, <laughs> That's definitely a lie. I don't like samba. <laughs> no, it's it's a workout. I used to. My husband and I used to take samba lessons, and it's it's a workout. Um, uh, Jimmy. Yes. I got an issue over here. What's that? Uh, my calling workstation is not working. That's not good. Yeah. Are you using Google Chrome? Yeah. Hmm. Well, hang in there. Hopefully it'll come back. You might have to refresh. As much as I hate to say that, you might have to, um, in well, order to get that working. Um, um, I don't let me think. Try, we'll, let me try. I'm not sure we'll be using it that much this class, but we'll see. Um, Mauricio, welcome back, my friend. Thank you, Shane. Nice to see you again. Nice. To see I you. hope this time the. Thank you. I hope this time this uh, how do you say that uh, hangout don't, uh -huh. doesn't kick kick doesn't kick me out again. I know yeah. we've been having we've been having problems. I'm actually really nervous uh, for this class because I'll be using YouTube again. And um, sometimes when I use YouTube, um, we have problems. So hopefully that won't won't happen. Um, Miguel, you're in. Good for you, my friend. Oh yeah, thanks. Oh bad. yeah. It was so oh, bad. Oh, yeah. Being yeah. in the lobby, <coughs> being in the lobby is hell. <laughs> and um, you know Laura. Okay. Laura, how are you? Yeah. Hello. Hey. I'm fine, thank you. Good to see you. And um, Coco, welcome back. Thank you. And Rodrigo. Yes. Hey, how are you? How are you? I'm doing good. And yourself? Cool. Good. And um, Elmer, is it working now? No, it's not. No, it's not. Okay. Yeah, um, I refreshed the page and it's not working. But I think that um, I can use the, the Hangout chat box. Um, you might be able to. I'm not sure if we'll be able to see it, or you might not be able to see what we're typing. I'm not exactly sure how that works. So, um, but hang in there. And if you have any um, questions, you you your um, speaking skills are pretty solid. So you sh you know I should be able to understand what you're asking. But like I said, I'm not sure how much we're going to be using. Um, the chat box today because we're going to actually be doing a lot of talking about um, a couple videos. So I think we're full. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we're full. So um, let me just introduce myself really quick. Um, my name is Schnee and I am from the United States and I live in California 
and um, mm. I like to be inspired. Um, I'm a very I like to think that I'm a very passionate person about life, so I like to be inspired, um, especially by what other people have to say. So today um, we're going to be looking at some videos that hopefully will also inspire you guys. Um, hello to those of you who are watching. Hi Juan Carlos and um, Kenota and Momito and everybody who's outside in the lobby. Um, if a space becomes available, you know the drill. Try to try to take it. So um, yeah, let's go around the class and just introduce ourselves real quick. Um, Coco, you want to start? Um, introduce myself. Yep, just, just <laughs> like we do every class. <laughs> okay, um, it's uh, Coco um, from Algeria. Study, I'm student studying at university, and uh, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. Very nice. And um, Cylon. Yes, I'm from Spain. Hello, all. Um, I'm working part time and studying the other half. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. When I have some time, I want to improve my English. Very well. nice. Very nice. And Elmer. Hello, everybody. My name is Elmer. I am from Brazil. I live in the state of São Paulo. And um, actually, I am 23 years old. I work as an English teacher in Brazil. I love my job. Uh, also, I love Colingo. I am a Colingo holic. <laughs> um, yeah. I love to spend my time over here because, you know, my pronunciation has improved a lot since I came to Colingo for the first time. So this is really helpful to those that doesn't have so many native people to talk in English. You know, talking with a student is totally different from someone that uh, talks, speaks English. Right. Uh, since they are their childhood. So, I love Colingo. <laughs> That's all. Yeah, no, awesome. Yes, and I, your pronunciation from the first time I've met you, Elmer, yes, absolutely, has definitely improved. So, um, glad to hear it and see it. And, um, Glad that you're here. And um, is it uh, Genival or Genival? Genival. Genival. Not G. <laughs> it's Genival. Genival. Yeah. Genival. You got it. Is are you there, Genival? Oh no, I got the name right and not there. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see, we'll come back. Um, Miss Laura, would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, I'm Laura from Argentina. I live in Buenos Aires. Um, I work and I am studying English. Very nice. What do you What do you do, Laura? What do you do for a living? Um, I work as a babysitter. Awesome! That's awesome. Very cool. I love it. Love it, love it. And Mauricio. Uh, good evening, Shanae. Good evening, everybody. My name is Mauricio Rodriguez, and, I come, and I'm from the place when you, have, when you have flu, you can drink a cup of hot aguapanela water uh, with lemon, and you get better very fast. And let me guess, that's Colombia. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> cool. <laughs> beautiful Colombia. And yeah. um, Miguel, so cool. Miguel. Um, I'm from that beautiful country as well. I'm from Colombia. Um, I'm 23 years old. Uh, what else? You're a Kalingoholic. <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. Addicted. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think a lot of us are. I'm, you know, I'm a Kalingoholic myself. I, I love my job. I, I can ask for a better job. I love what I do. So yeah, I'm, I'm addicted as well. And um, Rodrigo. Uh, hello, I'm Rodrigo. I'm, um, I'm 29. I'm from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. 
I work in the financial markets with investments and in my spare time I I write books. Very nice. What kind of books? Uh, philosophy. Oh wow. Very cool. Very cool. I'm I'm a writer oh, myself, yeah. but I um I am a I do fiction. So Oh cool. Yeah, fiction. So and um I also do a lot of travel writing, so but yeah, very nice. All right guys. Well, welcome. Um like I said, today we're going to be watching um, a couple videos. Um, first, I'll upload the video onto YouTube. These videos are from TED.com. Okay, and I'll ex you guys want me to explain ain't? Yeah. Like, what about it? Well, because you know, how do you use that, and um, if it is okay to use it, because. Well, when I watched, you know, videos and everything, I have heard uh, singers using this word, but people keep saying that it is a very, very low level word. Um, it's slang. It's definitely slang. Um, yeah. De hey, Juan Carlos. So, um, but yeah, it is slang. Um, if you use it a lot, people might think that you're uneducated even though you might not be um, like you could say something like um, there ain't no <laughs> and this is really this is really low low level there ain't no milk in the fridge um, that might be a way that you it means that there is there isn't any there is not any ain't it's means like there is the raps, the rappers, they they talk like this. Um, I ain't, I ain't going to heard. some place. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's Celine Dion using this word. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure that she probably has. I mean, I use it sometimes. It's very, very informal. Just know that it's very, very it's informal. informal. Yeah, if you're gonna. Say it. Make sure that you're talking to someone that understands that you're using it informally. Um, you would never use it in a business meeting. You would never use it in school. You would never use it to write a formal email or a letter or anything like that. You would only simply use ain't in conversation with your friends. Yeah, ain't nobody home. Yeah. Um, so it's okay to use it. Just be cautious of when you use it. I usually use it when I'm kidding because, I mean, like I said, it is really informal. So um, oh, I'm trying to think of an example of when I've used it recently because I'm sure I have. Um, I don't know. There ain't no lights on in the house. Usually people, um, it would sound weird if you said, like, there ain't any because really you would say there aren't any. So usually ain't is followed by no, which there it's like a double negative and then it just sounds really weird. You know, there ain't no milk in the fridge, you know, so it's kind of hickish. So yeah, just be careful how you use it, but it's okay. I mean, it's just don't use it, you know, in any academic sense. So, um, and you'll, Creative writers, you'll hear use this a lot. Um, here's the video. I'm going to post the link in the chat box just for those of you who are outside who are watching. So for those of you who are watching, this is the video that we're going to start with, and we might not get through the whole thing. Um, for those of you who are in class and out of class, this is the link to where there is a transcript. So you can actually read and follow along with what this lady's saying. Her name is Becky Blanton, and she um, she's a writer, a journalist, and she became homeless for a year. Everybody know the word homeless? Yeah. Yeah. Place to live. She didn't have a place to live, and um, so this is her speaking. Okay, don't touch what? the video. I forgot to mention that. No. 
people don't talk. To pause. Read it, please. <laughs> okay, nobody touch anything. Don't touch anything. Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. That's okay. okay. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, no worries. So um, I'll I'll be the pauser and the player of the video. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. No. No worries. No worries. It happens all the time. Um, <laughs> so, all right. So we're gonna watch um, part of this. Um, I don't like a lot of dead air for a super long time, so we'll probably watch this about halfway through, and then. Um, talk about it some and then um, we'll watch the other half and um, talk about that and if we get through that and still have some time left over um, there is another video I have uh, for us to watch so if you want to follow along with the transcript let me just show you how to do that real quick is the screen share working Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So um, that second link I gave you from the TED.com, you'll see here um, that there is a place where it says show transcript. You can go there, and obviously I would prefer if you showed the transcript in English and not in your L1, but you can actually follow along with what the lady is going to be talking about as we watch the video. So here's that link again in case you want to follow along. Uh, Juan Carlos, is that a fedora that you're wearing? I don't know what is a fedora. It's a type of hat. It looks like that might be what you're wearing. Yes, it's, it's yeah. a, a hat. I don't know what kind of hat. It's, it's just a hat. Yeah, I like it. Nice hat. Uh, thank you so much. It, nice it covers my, my, my face, so it's better. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> funny. Okay, so if everybody goes ahead, um, who's in class, if everyone can just go ahead and click on YouTube. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start the video, and we'll go from there.
Coco. Coco, why do you? Did it start over? Ah, <laughs> uh, I hate when this happens because I can't, I can't fast forward as far as I know. It's not, it wasn't my fault. <laughs> fault. <laughs> okay. Um. Let's see. We'll just re-listen to this part. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it um, there for just a, a moment. Um, I want to talk about a, a few of the things that um, Becky is talking about here. Elmer, I don't know if you have a plane flying overhead or what, but um, it's super loud. So I'm gonna mute you for just a moment. Um, I wrote some things up here on the board. Um, the first. The first three are things that she is 
talking has talked about, and I'm sure we'll continue to talk, uh, to talk about in her in her talk. But I'd like to just kind of go over these a little bit and and see what your your thoughts and opinions um, are on these uh, statements. So she said that society equates living in a permanent structure, even if it's a shack, with having value. What is a shack? Say that again. What is a shack? What is a shack? A shack is like a dilapidated building that somebody would call, call their house. Um, okay. It's a very, it's a very poor house. It's somebody like a very poor person would live in a shack. Public so, house? No, it's not public. Um, let me see. A shack. Um. It's. Let's see. Can you write? Yeah, and I'll try. Here's some pictures of what would be considered shacks. I think the definition of a shack is probably going to differ um, depending, uh, on, yes, where, I know. depending I know. I... on where you live or whatnot. But um, yeah. those are kind of um, those are some pictures of, of shacks, I guess, and what the it's like this uh, the term would, yes would there's there's lens has a lot of shocks shocks right S say that again this lens has a lot of uh, shocks um, I didn't get this what has uh, a lot of shocks it's lens uh, let me see uh, if I'm saying correctly it's slum you know? yeah slang. slums it's slang. Slang. S U, no S L U M. Yes, yeah, slum, slum. Yes. Uh huh. A slum. Yeah, exactly, exactly. A slum would have a lot of shacks. It is a poor small house. So, what Becky is saying is that even if you have a shack, a shack is still a permanent structure, right? It's not a tent. It's not a van. It's not a motorhome. It's not a boat. It's a permanent structure. It's home. It's what we would call home. Um, and she's saying that society equates living in a permanent structure with having value. What do you, do you agree with her or what do you think? What's your opinion on that? Could you repeat the sentence, please? Sure, absolutely. So Becky's saying that society equates living in a permanent structure with having value. Or in other words, she's saying that in order equates? for you to equates, which means equal. Equates, yes, I know, but it's yeah. equates living in a permanent structure with having value. Living, living in a perm living, living in a permanent structure with having value. So basically in other words what she's saying is that in order for you to have value as a person, or in order for you to feel as if you have value as a person? Yeah. You, you, have, you need to be uh, in a permanent structure. Exactly. I, you, yeah, you I don't agree. Yes, okay. I don't agree. It's, okay. a kind of life, it's a kind of life. It's a kind of life. I think there are many people that uh, live in different places and they move uh, a lot of times in their life. So. We, for me, it's bad, you know, because I'm used to being a permanent, permanent uh, house. But I think it's not for everyone. I think a lot of people can move uh, for, uh, often, and it's it, it wouldn't be a problem. So, what if what if the person what if the way that the person lived though is that they moved from place to place and lived in a tent? Nomads. A nomad, okay. And you say, you're saying that a, you're, in your opinion, a nomad has just as much value as someone who lives in a permanent house. Yes, in my opinion, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? What do you think? I, I disagree. I think that per, that people that don't have, which don't have house. Uh, have the same value of uh, that the others. 
than the uh, than the same value. The same value. Yes. Is, is but I right? say that. So you agree with me? Yes, yes. I agree with you. Okay. Yes. You, you said disagree. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I'm. Okay. <laughs> I'm, uh, yes, <laughs> so I, I I agree. Totally agree with you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let. Yes. I got a different point of view. Okay. Because what is back saying is that the society judges people that are homeless. So they look at those people and say, ah, like, oh, it's disgusting. I forgot, yeah, I forgot how people. to say that in. Yeah, exactly. So I forgot yeah. how to say this in English. Like uh, prejudice, you, prejudice, I think. Prejudice, yeah. Prejudice, yes. Oh, Coco, El Coco muted you. I don't know why, Elmer, but Coco muted you. Um, you want to unmute yourself and continue? No, it's okay. Okay. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that our society is taking a blind eye on people that are homeless. So everyone is as valuable as valuable in an equal way so you are a person and that one that doesn't have a home doesn't have a structure to live is a person too so everyone has the, the same value as uh, one humankind I completely agree I completely agree um, now let me ask you guys this because I, I agree with you I don't I don't care if you if you live in a shack if you live in a mansion you live in a tent or you sleep in a sleeping bag on the beach I don't care um, you're a human you're a human being and you and you have value and um, it, even if you think that nobody on this planet cares about you I'm the type of person that if I saw you and thought maybe you needed help maybe you don't maybe you're perfectly fine with your living situation and that's that's your thing but I would still offer to to try to do something to to help out if I could um, because you are a person and you do have value however um, so I agree with what everybody's saying let, but let me ask you this do you agree with her that society equates living in a permanent structure with having value it that not necessarily you personally it doesn't yeah, society, mean yes. personally yes I agree that society they judge uh, uh, based on uh, information about uh, where are you living, or you know, if you if you will live in Aslan, they will think of some specific uh, opinion about us. If you will live in a rich place, they will have another opinion. So society mm -hmm. judge. Yes, I agree. Yeah, we call those what we call those in English. We call them preconceived preconceived notions. So okay. society has preconceived yeah. notions about people based on their living situation. Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, okay. Yeah, what exactly. about what about this? Because um, I think this is really poignant on leading us into this next issue of negative perceptions can impact our reality. Negative mm -hmm. perceptions can impact our own reality. Well, yeah, if you depends. don't care about if you don't care about other people, you know, I think it doesn't impact our reality. You know, uh, for example, if I, I'm a homeless and everybody look at me like if I'm if I need something, if I don't care about them, it's okay for me because I don't care, so no problem. But if I care about others, so I'm in, I'm in trouble. <laughs> it will affect yeah. me. But yeah. you always care about someone anyway? Uh, no, well, I can care only about people that uh, respect me, you know? So yeah. I can avoid people that look at me in a bad way. So I think you can use, you can, um, uh, you can create a filter of these people. Okay. I, do, I do that in my, in my life, you know? Mauricio, did you did you have something you wanted to add to this? Yes, according to the quantum physics, <laughs> we can God. create our, our no, yes, we can create our reality, and we are living in 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 a world full of negative perception. That's mm. why the world is that that is the world is uh, is like is the world the is 
is like like can you see now? Yes. Uh, yeah, the, the universe. The universe is in your mind, right? Excuse I don't me? know anything about uh, quantum physics, so this I'm is really totally sure. not, the my, universe, not my the topic. Universe is, the universe is our, in our mind, right? We judge, uh, we judge the, the world, and the world is, is uh, what are, are we judging? Right. Well, right. well, well, what I, what I, why I, what I uh, have understood is that we all, all the, 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 all the people, the humankind, can create uh, the reality, realities, realities. Do, yes. So, oh, well, so. Do you guys really? Th I don't know. I don't know if I buy that. I, because I, I, I think I understand what you're saying, Mauricio. You're saying that we create our own reality in our brain, right? No, I think, well, in my opinion, we create, we judge the reality and based on these judgments, uh, we, it's res, it results in a good or bad feelings. That's what I believe. Okay? So, okay. We, judge the, we judge the reality and, and we are responsible to our feelings in some way. Yes, okay. and, those, and, and those thoughts are, are materialized in in the external life, right? You can you can materialize uh, the those thoughts in the, in material. So that's that for I I for that for the for that reason I I I sorry <laughs> sometimes that's okay. it's frustrating. No, it's okay. Uh, that's why we're here. But uh, that's why uh, we. We live in a world full of negative perceptions, uh, full of of, uh, of 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 afraid. Maybe sometimes. Well, okay. we we got, we have choices. For example, love and compassion. Yes, but well, I don't know if you are understanding. Me. Sorry. No, I I think I think I am. I think I am. But I'm not sure if I totally agree with you. To be quite honest. She's saying that negative perceptions can impact our reality. And Rodrigo mentioned that, um, you know, I, at least I, if I understood Rodrigo to say, you know, if, if people are, are talking bad about you or uh, projecting negative emotions and feelings on you, that you have the power to not let it affect you. My question is, how realistic is that? Well, especially, hold on, especially, sorry. especially if you are in a situation like Becky is, you know, think about that, you know, she was very successful. Um, she looked at herself as a successful person. She didn't set out to be homeless. She set out to have a road trip for a year and things didn't go the way that she had planned them to go. And she ended up being homeless. And obviously, the word homeless has a negative connotation to it. So if you're sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, I'm homeless. How did this happen? Oh my gosh, I'm homeless. How did this happen? Can, that, can you really prevent that from impacting your reality? I well, don't think so. Because yeah, well, I, but it's not because it's not because there maybe it's... It's her concept. Oh, it's not good. It's not because people outside is saying bad things about her. At least it's because our uh, her own judgments. You know. Exactly. So to free to free of that. So maybe you need to f think ra radically in a different way. You know, to change it in order to I change it. But I don't believe it's possible. I, I think that's a beautiful concept, Rodrigo, and I think that you're spot on in, 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 in saying that. My question is I'm not sure how easy or realistic that would be to achieve, given depending on what kind of situation you're okay, in. Okay, for example, uh, if you have a people uh, saying bad things about you, talking bad things about you, uh, to, in order to avoid that, I would say if you if you respect yourself. Oh, where'd he go? Oh no! Oh, I think it's connected. Like me, yeah. we are having s several issues Is it with Google Plus. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bummer. Well, let me ask you guys, since you guys are still here, what do you, I mean, what do you, do you understand what, what the point that I'm trying to get at? That if you're constantly, if you're in a situation that is not easy, like being homeless, like, like Becky uh, Blanton was, um, how do you think it's realistic to do what Rodrigo is saying and just not, um, not let it bother you? Or do you think eventually that those negative perceptions of your situation will begin to impact your reality. Chine? Yes? Uh, someone has background noise. I think we are getting feedbacks from the, the live stream. It is... Can you hear me now? Body. Can you hear me? No, no. We can hear you perfectly, but there are someone... Uh, giving us a lot of feedback when you when you speak. Really? Yeah. Is that okay? Right? No, it's uh, okay. Is it okay for everybody? Yep. Yes. Can you hear yes. Me? Okay. All right. Um, Rodrigo, I don't know what happened. Um. I guess we're having problems with, with connection issues and people are getting kicked out and nobody knows why. Because Elmer, didn't you get kicked out earlier too? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I wish I could, yeah, I don't know. I wish I could fix that. So um, back to this. Do you agree? I mean, maybe you guys completely disagree with me and that's that's totally fine. <laughs> But um, she refers to negative perceptions of other people or um, uh, her own perceptions. You know, she's not, she's actually, she's not clear on that, Cylon, because I actually took this directly from the, um, the transcript. And all she mentioned, this is her exact words, were that negative perceptions can impact our reality. My best guess is she's probably talking about both. She's probably talking about society's negative perceptions as well as your own personal negative perceptions that you have of yourself. Well, I think then, I, I, yes, I agree. I think it, it can have an impact. It depends on your attitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I. Okay. So depending on your attitude, if you, if you're just sitting there dwelling on um, the negative perceptions or the the um, difficult situation, if you dwell on it, do you guys know that word? Dwell. If you dwell, it means you you think about something over and over and over again and you can't think about anything else you're dwelling on it um, it it means you know it, it just means that that's all you think about so if you're if you're dwelling on negative perceptions and not thinking about anything else then you're saying then yes that will impact your reality <laughs> is that right yeah. yeah okay I agree with that I completely agree with that um, this one I'm, I think we might want to come back to about homelessness is an attitude, not a lifestyle. I think this is a brilliant quote, but I'm not exactly sure I fully understand what she means by it yet. Um, so we'll continue watching. One real quick question. If you notice in the video, she mentioned that it's not that she could not afford an apartment. She couldn't afford. She could. She could have moved out of her van and into an apartment. But there were two things holding her back. And that was her dog and her cat. And her cat. Yeah. Because she couldn't afford an apartment that would allow the dog and the cat. Not to mention she has a Rottweiler, which I have Rottweilers. I've always had Rottweilers. They're amazing dogs, and um, in, especially in the United States, I would say 90% of places will not allow you to have a Rottweiler in your home. Um, some, some insurance companies won't, even if you own your own home, some insurance companies won't insure you if you have a Rottweiler. Wow. It's a very negative perception about the dog, talking about yeah. negative perceptions. Yeah, but, but Chanae, mm -hmm. is it due to the... Um, to the um, to the breed. No, I forgot how to say that. Yeah, the I got it. 
Is it due to the to the um, aggressive behavior of the hot wilder? That's what they say, but I've never seen. I, I have a pointer. I have a German short haired pointer that's far more aggressive than my Rottweiler. So but that is the that is the, that is the perception. I also have a Chihuahua that's ten times more aggressive than any of my dogs. <laughs> so, but yes, Such a name. It, yes. Can we say that it depends on its owner? Yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I completely think it's all the owner. But you know, talk about perception. Like you, you know, like you said, Elmer. You know, the perception of Rottweilers is that they have aggressive behavior, which I'm sure that's why she couldn't find the right apartment. An apartment more than likely would have let her keep her cat, but that means she would have had to get rid of her dog, and she wouldn't do that. Do you think that was a wise or a foolish decision? Do you think that she should have gotten rid of her pets and gotten herself uh, off the streets, or do you um, think that she should have kept her pets and done what she did? Uh, unthinkable. Today. Unthinkable. What's unthinkable, Mauricio? To let my friends, because if, if because my, the pets are my friends, so it's unthinkable to let them out or to get rid of them. Yes, uh, if yeah. uh, I I couldn't I couldn't stand the idea or I can't I I can't stand the idea to 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 leave to, to leave my friends uh -huh. uh, those animals are my <coughs> friends uh, to live out of my away from me yes yeah yeah I agree you... but mm, it would depend on the person relationship with his pets because mm, some people don't just don't give them the same relevance or priorities that's I think that's that's spot on yeah silent and depending on how you feel about animals too um, I don't know do we have any non animal lovers in class is there anybody in class that doesn't own any pets, can't stand animals, can't stand the thought of having them. Uh, can, I, can I just express myself? Absolutely. Well, I think that Beck is right. I wouldn't ever leave a pet behind because pets love us in an unconditional way. So, how could you be so so evil, so feeling feelingless because you're living behind someone that loves you for no reason yeah i, I wouldn't call them evil because i love pet i love my pets too i love animals but i eat meat also so it depends uh, for you maybe a cow is not the same animal as a cat or a dog but they're all animals so i wouldn't call it evil well, I, I don't know. I think, I mean, I don't know. I mean, think of it this way. I mean, I'm not sure. I would, I'm not sure. It depends on how you think of it. Um, I think, I think in, in Becky's case, what her, which, what her options were would be to take her dog and the cat and her cat to the pound and leave them, leave them there and hope that they get a home. Um, and I think it depends on, on your perception, you know, for me, I could never, I could never do that. I've done that one time in my life, and it's when I had um, about eleven what we call feral, feral cats, um, feral cats, which is a domesticated house cat that's wild. You can't get near it, you can't touch it, nothing. Um, it's an epidemic in the United States, and I'm sure it's probably an epidemic where you guys live as well. Um, no matter where you live, um, because people don't spay and neuter their animals, and they run wild, and they have babies all over the place. So when I was in college, I'll try to keep this this uh, story short. When I was in college, I had um, two cats that showed up at my door that uh, wouldn't let me touch them, but they were hungry. They definitely wanted me to feed them, so I started feeding them. Well, two cats turned into about six cats really quick because both of them were female and both of them were pregnant and both of them had babies. Oh. Then six cats turned into 11 cats because then they had another litter. So here I am with 11 cats that you can't touch, you can't get near, you can't do anything with them, but I'm trying to feed all of them. 
And my landlords, the people who own the house that I lived in, said either you get rid of the cats or you have to go. I had no place to go. I had no choice. Not to mention I still had my dog with me. And so I had to somehow find a way, and I did. I caught every single one of these cats except for one. And I took them to the pound. And it was horrific. It was the worst thing I've ever done in my life. I would, I would never put myself in that situation again to make that happen because it was awful. I cried the whole time. Um, by the way, the one cat that stayed with me um, had one final litter. And I found homes for the two babies. And I kept, I kept the one who I still have to this day. So, and then I left her with my neighbors when I moved. But um, I think it depends on the situation. I think a lot of people, now I don't look at Becky and think that she's foolish for not getting an apartment because she wouldn't give up her animals. But some people might look at her and say, you're nuts, lady. You know, your, your well-being is more important than these animals. You know, so get rid of the animals and get an apartment. Um, does anybody here feel that way? Or are we all in the same boat where we're like, no, that's, that's fine. I'd live, in, I'd live in the van too. <laughs> I think she will maybe could try to, to give the cat and the dog to other person. Maybe yeah. someone that she trusts or a friend or a family or some place that could take care of them. Yeah. I think it have to be a place or a person that will like mm -hmm. maybe one person the cat and the other the dog. Yeah. I think yeah. that will be the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It just, it depends. It depends, you know, it depends. And that might, you know, that might be another option too, you know. Um, <laughs> Giving, giving the animals away to somebody who, who might yeah. want them and take good care of them and, and get yourself, you know, on your feet again. So um, it's an interesting concept, um, this whole deal, you know, what would you do? Would you, would you, live, would you live in the van Isn't with it? your cat and your dog? What about you, Juan Carlos? Uh, we, are, we are forgetting that uh, the woman was really depressed. And, and the animals, the cat and the dog, it's the only thing that she has. Yeah. It's a it's an emotional part. It's an emotional bond. I can I can quit them, you know. I agree. I'm alone. I'm. to go ahead and click back on YouTube okay and um, we'll continue watching Becky remember don't press anything <laughs> smiley face smiley face smiley face smiley face so don't press anything I do you right. I do you recommend a Google Chrome to have the those I do. class I do okay. I, re I definitely re dec recommend you Google Chrome for class okay um, okay so here let's watch a couple more minutes of Becky
Wow, that faked me out. I thought that there was still more. Um, to be honest, guys, I very rarely watch these videos all the way through before I teach them. Um, I like to watch them with you. I think it's a little bit more organic that way. So I usually watch about half the video um, and decide if I like what the person's saying or not. And then I'm like, well, that's good. We'll teach that one. So, um, but, um, so that's, let's talk about this before we go. Um, she says, where did it go? Um, people are not, we are not where, oh geez, where we live or where we sleep. Where we sleep or what our life situation is. We are not any of these things is what Becky is saying. Um, I want to close with this. We have about three minutes left. Becky says we are not where we live, where we sleep, or what our life situation is. She also said specifically what she claims herself to be. What does she say she is? A writer. Yes. She is a, she is a writer. She is a writer. So I would like to um, go around the room and um, say who we are, who we think we are um, as a person. And that's very hard to do in, in one word. Um, but I, I would say that I, I am a teacher, an educator, um, and, and, a, and a writer. I, I am, those are, if, I could, if I could classify myself, I guess, in two words, it would be that I am an educator and a writer. Um, I can't do just one because those are the two things. That's who I am. This is who I am as a person. I'm an educator and a writer. Um, Coco? Who who are you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just gonna say something. I believe that we cannot we we cannot live uh, live alone in that life. We should have someone to moralize us to to give us a push when we are down. Okay, I agree. a friend or family or someone else because we will not never be able to live alone. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like she said, you know, and she, you know, Becky tried to. Whoop. Oh, what? she may kicked out of the glass. <laughs> well, time is over. I think so. Miguel is absent, right? Okay, people, bye. I'm going to the next class. Yeah, bye. me too. <laughs> Goodbye. See you, See you bye there bye. then. Goodbye. Bye.